Yes, guys, welcome in, welcome in, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you for joining me again on this Sunday afternoon. How are you all? Hope you're all doing well. Guys, we're going to talk about it a little bit. It's going to be a nice Liverpool chat today. No shouting, no raving, no ranting. Let's just have a nice, cool Sunday Liverpool chat, guys. It's you and me in the chat. And we're just going to chat it up, talk about everything Liverpool. You get your questions in the chat as well. And... uh yeah, we're going to talk it up. But, guys, before we start, don't forget to go and smash that like button. Uh, subscribe if you've not subscribed. You know what I do, guys. All that good stuff. Share the video. Like, subscribe, like and subscribe. Share, share, share. Big up to everyone in the house at the moment. I hope you're all doing well. Pan off in the house. Daz, Baz, I hope you're doing well. Kay in the chat. King's in the chat. How you doing? Miz in the chat, man like Jave in the chat, Ibai in the chat, Alexander in the chat. Hope you're all doing well, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Yeah, big up to all of you. Big up Frank in the chat, Captain Sal. Yeah, big up Mark, Josh, Psychedelic Warrior. Big up to you, my man. It's Psychedelic Site. It's his new name because he can't find his old account. <laughs> Big up, John Conway. Wolf, how you doing? Hope you're doing well, guys. Hope you're all doing well on this lovely Sunday afternoon. So, guys, as we know, we debated it yesterday, the Henderson and Fabinho stuff. We are going for a massive Liverpool midfield rebuild right now. And, yeah, look, it's exciting times. Look, we've... It's, it's quite exciting because, you know, as a Liverpool fan, usually summer transfer windows are quite boring, like nothing happens. And uh, at this moment in time, stuff is happening. You know, we've got players leaving, we've got players coming in. It's quite an exciting window. Um, and obviously with this Fabinho and Henderson stuff, it's, it, there's even more to talk about which is amazing for Liverpool in a summer transfer window. Let's face it. Usually by now, our summer business is all done. We're watching everyone else buy players, and we're just waiting for pre-season to start. And that's it. You know, but now we've got a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. We have got to get a Fabinho replacement. We've got to get a Hendo replacement if he does leave. Yeah, we need players in, man. We still need a centre-back, in my opinion, as well. I don't think that's gone away. But Liverpool have got a few issues, I say. You know, Liverpool apparently still waiting on official documents uh, before the closing of the deal on Fabinho. That's coming from Fabrizio Romano this afternoon. So Liverpool are just waiting on them official documents to arrive. And then Firmino will literally be their player and he'll be gone. Uh, big up to for, uh, Fabinho, uh, by the way. One thing I want to say about Fabinho. Yeah, he's not been the old Fabinho. He's not been the Fabinho we all know and love. But what I will say about Fab right now, I want to say this about Flacco right now. He's leaving with dignity. Do you know what I mean? He's leaving our football club with some dignity. You know, he's not kicking up a fuss. He's not moaning. He's not groaning. He had a nice, simple conversation with the manager. The manager said you can go if you want to go. And it's been a nice, easy transaction. No issues on Fabinho. He's not kicking up a fuss. He loves the football club. And he's, and I think he's paying the football club a lot of respect. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 re, I respect Fab for it. I, 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 respect, I respect Fab for it. I mean, big up the Fabinho. Big up the Fabinho. Uh, big up, uh, Storm in the teacup. Big up to you, my friend. Big up, John Conway in the house. Hope you're doing well. Hamza in the house as well. Keegan in the house. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Yeah, um, yeah Flacco's a legend. Uh, I mean, look, Liverpool, yeah, Storm in the teacup says it right. Fab is leaving the same way he came in. 
for his held head up held, held, his head up held high and he's coming in quietly and he's leaving quietly. No fuss, no mess. Yeah, oh, I've got time for Fabinho. I'm telling you, as a person, as a human being, I've got a lot of time for Fabinho. Look, Fabinho, the footballer, it's probably the right time for Fabinho to leave. I ain't going to lie. I mean, I've been craving for Fabinho and Henderson and all these players and Ox and Milner. And I've been craving for these players to leave for so long now. And they're all leaving. And it's Fabinho's time to go. And he's doing it with respect. And that's all I want to say on Fabinho. I'm not going to knock him. I'm not going to shout about it or anything like that. I think he's leaving with a lot of respect. And I hope he has a great, uh, I hope he has a great career for the rest of his time. And big up to him. Big up to him. But yeah, Liverpool are just waiting on documents to come in and then that deal can be closed on Fabinho. Now, there's... With Fabinho leaving, guys, with Fabinho leaving, I think this has caught Liverpool cold. I don't think Liverpool ever expected Fabinho to leave this summer. You know, we all know we're coming out of the football club that Fabinho was the untouchable one. You know, in that midfield, a lot of other midfielders were available to go if they wanted to go. By the look of it, Jordan Henderson. If he's a, if people pay, Jordan Henderson can leave. But Fabinho is classed as untouchable. And I think the reason they was classed as untouchable, I don't think they would have ever thought they got the amount of money they did for Fabinho. I don't think they would have accepted anything less than £40 million for Fab. I think £40 million for Fabinho, and the way he's playing at the moment, his age, just coming on to 30 I think it's a great bit of business for the football club and they're letting him go. And anything less than that, Liverpool wouldn't have acknowledged it. They would have just kept Fabinho going. There's no point selling him for less than 40. You know, we're, we're keeping. But because they got the £40 million pound bid, they couldn't reject it. And because they couldn't reject it, it sort of scuppered what Liverpool need to do in the transfer window now. Because I always think the, the what Liverpool were going to do in the transfer window, if Fabinho didn't leave the football club, I think what Liverpool will go do, let me know in the chat what you think, guys. But I think li what Liverpool will go try and do is go and get Lavia and a centre back in. I think that's what Liverpool will try and do. They'll go and get Lavia in from Southampton and a centre back in, right? And then Lavia would have been the understudy to a Fabinho. He could have come in, taken his time, coming into the, uh, into the team, work his way in. He wouldn't have to be an automatic starter, can rotate with Fabinho. And that sort of thing. And take his time with it. And then you've got uh, a player in Lavia who can eventually take over Fabinho when he does leave the football club. I think that's what Liverpool are actually thinking and actually planning. And then uh, and then getting a defender in because we do need a defender because of the injury-prone defenders we have in Gomez and Matip. So you need a, we need a centre-back in there. So I think that was Liverpool's plan. But then I think it all got thrown under the under the car as soon as Fabinho bid came in, a Hendo bid came in. I don't think Liverpool were expecting to lose Fabinho and Henderson in one transfer window. So now Liverpool have got to make sure they get the transfers right. Now, a lot of players are leaving our football team. So Milner's left, Ox has left, Naby Keita's left, Bobby Firmino's left. Uh, Fabinho's going to leave. Maybe Henderson. I'm not sure on that yet. Lowest 50 50. You know, it, it's a lot of players leaving our football club. So a lot of players leaving our football club. And at the moment, we've only got McAllister and Sabozlai in, who are, who are tremendous footballers. There's no doubt about it. Sabozlai and, uh, and McAllister are tremendous footballers. We're all, we're all happy with that business. We're, we're, all, we're all happy as punch about getting them two footballers into our football club. We need more, though. We need more. But these two players leaving, especially Fabinho, because he is the number six, I think that is what the problem is. And what we're noticing now, I'm sure you've all done it on as well, guys, but we're going online as Liverpool fans the last 24, 48 hours looking at defensive midfielders around and the, the talent pool. The talent pool for experienced defensive midfielders is really, really small. It's really small. There ain't a lot out there. The world-class ones are at their clubs. You never go get hold of them. 
to the world class defensive midfielders like your Rodri's, your Casemiro's, your yeah, your your, your Chouamini's and players like that. They're all at their clubs. They are not going nowhere. Yeah. So Liverpool, the talent pool is very small now. If you look at the defensive midfielders that are around, especially around Europe, they're quite young. They're quite young, um, but they're good. You know, Casado's 21, Navia's 19, Fernando Luis, I think he's 20 himself. Um, there's been reports today that Liverpool are interested in, is it uh, someone, Diop, who played in the under-20s World Championship, World Cup, I think it was. Uh, apparently, Liverpool are looking at him as well. But these are all very, very young footballers. There was this geezer that plays in Brazil that came on to Twitter yesterday and everyone was talking about him, but that got knocked back. You know, so there's a lot of defensive midfielders, but they're all they're all very young. They're all very young. Tyler Adams, Lavia, all of them. They're young, not that experienced defensive midfielders. So are Liverpool going to take a, a gamble? Are Liverpool going to have to take a gamble? Because we have to do this now in six weeks. Now, you know me, guys. I've been, if you're new to the channel, if you're not new to the channel, you've been here a long time. You know my feelings on Henderson and Fabinho and, and players like this. I've been wanting them out of this football club for a while now. But I've been saying it for a while, since the summer transfer window opened. I want them all gone, but I want it done in a 12-month period. Because, you know, ripping our whole team apart in one transfer window and try and replace them all in one transfer window is going to be impossible. Especially by who we're owned by. You know, we've got FSG as owners, guys. You know. So it's going to be impossible. I want it done for a 12-month scale from what this summer to next summer with January in the middle. That's what I wanted to do. So some players leave then, some players leave then, some players leave then, play come in, play come in, play come in. So you, you build it across a 12-month um, period. But we've done it in six weeks. This is the madness. We've done it in six weeks. So Naby Keita's gone. Uh, Milner's gone. Chamberlain's gone. Fabinho looks like he's on his way. Hendo's 50-50. That's a lot of the core of our midfield gone in a six-week time frame. And we've got to replace them players and bring them in in the same time frame, which is a bit mad. Which is a bit mad. And look, we can't we can't do it logistically because who our owners are. You know, FSG are not going to go, right, you've lost six players. We know we need that. We we have to do this this summer. Is two to three hundred million. Go and get it done. Go and get whoever you want. We just need these players in. It's not going to happen. We've got a way of buying players. We have a strategic way of buying players. FSG have their way of doing it. So we're going to have to do it that way. Like it or lump it, guys. There is no point arguing about it because it's the way it is. It's the way it works. It's the way it happens. So there is no point us shouting and moaning and arguing about it. There really ain't. They really ain't. So we got to go and get players to come into this football club that are willing to come now. We're going to have to take gambles. There's going to have to be players out there like Lavia is an easy get for Liverpool. Lavia is an easy get for Liverpool. The problem is, is his price range of 50 million. And no one's going to pay that. I think Southampton want that money because there's a buy it back clause from Man City. So they're trying to get the most out of him they possibly can. And I don't blame them. But Liverpool need to just get him in. It's a gamble. And I keep saying this. I've said it in the last few streams. Lavia is a gamble. But Liverpool are in no place now not to take that gamble. It's like they have to. It's like they have to. Because the problem is with Casado, and I know that's probably what everyone in there's 200 people in here right now. And I expect all of you are thinking the same thing. Just go and get Casado in. And I'd be like, yeah, I think he's a little overhyped. I think he's a very, very, very good footballer. But I just think he's a little overhyped. But go and get him in. Our problem is we know where our owners are. We're not going to spend £100 million on Casado. We're just not. And especially when we got McAllister from Brighton as well. It's going to be more difficult to get Casado out of Brighton when they've just sold us McAllister. Look. No one knew McAllister had a release clause of 35 million. I don't know. I even know how Liverpool found out about it, 
because no other clubs found out about it. Because if you thought, if all the other clubs in the Premier League knew McAllister had a release clause of 35 million, that all of them would have been over it. So I don't know how Liverpool found out about it, but they did. They did their work and they went and got him. And I feel like Brighton feel like they've had their pants pulled down a little bit on the McAllister deal because he shouldn't be going for 35 million. Nowhere near. So Liverpool going back in for Brighton, going to Brighton again and going, right, we want your, we want his midfield partner now in Casado. They're going, well, you pulled our pants down over McAllister a little bit. You're a bit cheeky there. Um, yeah, give us 100 million because Sado's yours. And Liverpool is just not going to do that. Should they do it? Probably. We, are we in a position right now that Liverpool can afford not to do that gamble? This is the issue. If Fabinho does leave, the rumours are Liverpool, Fabrizio Romano has just tweeted out that Liverpool are just waiting on the paperwork now. Once the paperwork comes in, uh, Fabinho is gone. That's all they're waiting for, the paperwork to be done and the Fabinho deal's done and finished and he's off. Liverpool have no other number sixes. You can't ask Stefan Barsetic to be the number six. You just can't. You just can't ask him to be the number six. Plus, he's just come back from injury. Also, I don't think he's a number six. I think he can play a bit more further up the field as a more of an advanced midfielder. Uh, a bit further up the field. I don't think he's a six. Then you've got Curtis Jones, who a lot of people have said can maybe play in a double pivot like he did in the under-21s. I think some of us were talking about that last night. I'm all with that, but playing under-21 football to Premier League football is a lot different. And I don't know if Curtis has got the defensive capabilities to play in a double pivot in Premier League football. That would be my issue there. So I wouldn't want that to do that either. Plus, I think Curtis Jones is far better playing in them attacking areas like he did at the end of the season. Get Curtis Jones in them attacking areas. Why would you want to limit his game? You know, Curtis Jones ain't about defending. Curtis Jones, he wants to get further up the field. Why do you want to take a game away from him? Makes no sense. He don't want Curtis playing there. You don't really want Stefan playing there. So what are you left with? Jordan Henderson, if he doesn't leave. I do not want Jordan Henderson as my number six next season. To be honest, I don't want Jordan Henderson at my football club right now, let alone a number six. So Liverpool got no choice but to do St. Madia. Liverpool got to go in the market. They have just got to bite their tongue and go, right, we, we just have to get someone. Unless Klopp is happy with a gamble. This is the whole thing. I don't think I can see Jurgen Klopp going to Lavia and making him his number six next season. I just don't think Klopp will do that. I'm not sure. But then you've got Kone out there as well. Now, Kone's had a knee injury in the under-21s, but apparently the knee injury is not that bad and he should actually be back soon. Did Liverpool make another bid for him? Or did Liverpool actually go for Taram again? This was brought up yesterday in the show yesterday. Did Liverpool just go back in for Taram? Do we just go back in for Taram? Because... Tran can play that he, he can play that number six role, but he doesn't play he wouldn't play it like Fabinho does. He's a more of a an attack minded number six, here we say. He will get the ball and, and drive with from deep positions with the ball. You know, he'll carry the ball from deep positions. He's not really your out and out sort of like defensive number six, like a Fabinho would be, but he can play there. But again, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. So all these, whatever Liverpool do is a gamble. Amrabat's the one. I think someone says it in the chat here. Amrabat's the one. You know, we need both Lavia and Amrabat combined by 8 million. So when it's 13 million and Fabinho 40 mil. That's it. Big up, my man. Big up. Um, that Big up, that's in the chat. That's the one as well. Amrabat is available. 25 to 30 mil. He's not a lot of money. Yeah. He's quite experienced. I mean, he played really well in the World Cup. Um, I watched the Conference League final, West Ham, Florentina. I thought he was tremendous in that game. I thought he dictated the whole match. I thought he, was a great, he looked fantastic. Every time I've watched him play, I've always been very, very impressed by him. Now, 
he would not be so much of a gamble because of his experience factor. He's a little bit older, more mature, and he's a good footballer. He's not a he's not a dead player, man. He's not a dead player. I would uh <clears throat> I would I, I wouldn't be surprised if Liverpool are looking at him. Turam and Kone as Captain Sal says in the chat there. I mean that's yeah, they they're great players. They the great play, like Liverpool whatever Liverpool do is a gamble. It is a bit of a gamble because the experienced quality defensive midfielders that Liverpool would probably want to go and get to cover Fabinho are not available. They just ain't. Look and no matter what I say about Fabinho, we've all said about Fabinho the last 15 months. We can't not pretend that when Fabinho came to this football club, he was special. He was fantastic in his defensive midfield role. One of the best defensive midfielders in world football at his absolute best. So that is a hard position to cover. Now, the last 15 months of Fabinho has been nothing like that. So anyone who's coming in right now is probably going to be an upgrade on the Fabinho of today. But the Fabinho, the Fabinho of three years ago, totally different team, totally different player. Getting that, so it's a difficult one for Liverpool. Now there is one thing I've been seeing going around today on social media that I'm going to bring to you guys right now. I'm going to bring this one to you guys right now and let's see what you think about this. Um, that's a good shout as well. Darlington, big up to you, Edson Alvarez is the man. That's a big shout, that's a good shout as well. Um, big up K-Mac, hope you're doing well, man. I've, I've seen this one doing the rounds today. So, there is talk that Liverpool will go back in for Pavard from Bayern Munich, yeah? There's a lot of talk today that Liverpool, I think, um, Christian Falk, who writes mostly about Bayern Munich, over in Germany, he's like sort of like the Germany, like uh, Paul Joyce in a way, yeah. He said today that Liverpool had gone back in and speaking again to. Um, oh, it's gone out of my head now. <laughs> uh, the right back uh, by Munich has gone right out of my head all of a sudden. And uh, thinking of getting him back in, yeah, getting Pavard back in, right? And I won I'm sitting there thinking today. Why are Liverpool going back for Pavard when we need a defensive midfielder? That makes no sense to me. And then it twigged. Then it twigged. So, reading that this morning, yeah, Liverpool back in for Pavard out of nowhere, at right back. You know, this is coming from Christian Falk, who I said is a, a journalist that mostly writes for Bayern Munich, right? And um, Tank twigged at me and thought, hang on. Is he going to do what I think he might do? And play Thiago and Trent together in a double pivot. Because that's what's going around at the moment. Could Thiago play in the number six? Because everyone on social media at the moment is uh, saying that Thiago, put Thiago in that number six position. Play Thiago in the six. And then Pavard news come out again today. Where I thought that news was dead. You know, Liverpool said they weren't in for a right back. And all of a sudden we're back in for Pavard. Oh, oh. Is Liverpool thinking of getting Pavard in as right back and then putting Trent alongside Thiago in a double pivot? That, I mean, that's... That, that, that is what Liverpool might be looking at because they might not be able to find the defensive midfielder they want in this short time. And I, look, part of me wouldn't blame them this whole Fabinho thing has caught Liverpool off guard, guys. And as I said, the talent pool for an experienced defensive midfielder is very small. Very small. And if Liverpool can't find a defensive midfielder that were willing to come to Liverpool yet or they could afford or anything like that, and they're looking at it and thinking, right, let's put Trent and Thiago as a double. Because why would we be backing for Pavard? That's what I'm asking, guys. If the rumours are true... That Liverpool are back in for Pavard out of nowhere when we when they come out and said, no, nah, Liverpool don't really want a right back this summer. It's all about a centre back and uh, midfielders. Why are we back in for Pavard then? Sometimes something might be happening in there where they're thinking, right, put Trent and Thiago as the double pivot there, Pavard at right back, and then you've got your Curtis Joneses, your McAllisters, your Sabozalis, you know, uh, for the advanced midfield roles. 
It's the only thing I can think of. But then that's still leaving you short. You still got to get a lavia. I think you still got to get a lavia in. That that'd be in my only problem. Because my problem with all this is that you can't rely on Thiago. You can rely on Trent, but you can't rely on Thiago to stay fit. So Liverpool still need a midfielder. So maybe that's when they go and get Lavia. They use the experience of Thiago to play alongside Trent. And then they go and get a Lavia in, bring Lavia to Liverpool, and Lavia and Thiago sort of like rotate to keep Thiago fit, to manage his minutes, and to bring Lavia in slowly. And you play double pivot of Lavia and Trent in that midfield. And then you have your advanced midfielders of uh, McAllister and to Bosley and Curtis Jones and players like that. Because I just don't know what Liverpool are going to do. I really don't know what... I really don't know what uh, Liverpool are going to do. <laughs> Steve Amy owns it, speaking facts. You know, you're not the only one. Everyone says it. Everyone says it. Especially when I have my glasses on. Everyone says I look like Steve Amy, man. <laughs> everyone says I look like Steve Amy. Big up, man. Because I'm trying to wonder why we're back in for some like a right back. This <sighs> McAllister and Trent as a pivot as well. Yeah, McAllister at his time at Brighton and Argentina has played in that pivot, in that double pivot. You know, alongside you know that can work as well. I wonder if that if that's what they're going down. I wonder if they're looking at. I wonder if they're looking at now that. Trent might be the answer to all this. And they're just going to go and get a right back that's easier to get. It's a bit of the coward's way out, if you ask me. I think Liverpool should be a bit better than that. They shouldn't be just looking at how to do it within the club. I think you should be going out there and getting a player to come into the club and uh, take that role. Because it is a bit of the coward's way out where they're looking at it and going, right, there's no defensive midfielders on the market that we can afford. So, we've got Trent now. Let's go and get a right back in and put Trent in that double pivot. We'll change it up next season. That means you have to change formation as well. And as Klopp was always going to change formation, you'd have to change for maybe a 4-2-3-1 or, 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 or something like that, which means it could get the best out of Sabozolai, though. This is the thing as well. You could actually get the best out of Sabozolai playing this way because... So you put Trent in that area and you get in a right back in, you get Pavard in, you play him right back, you put Trent in the central midfield area, I say alongside a McAllister, say, yeah, or a Thiago, right? And then you play Sabozola in the 10, where he wants to play. You know, that's where he wants to play in the 10, yeah? And then you have Mo on the right, Diaz on the left, and Darwin Nunes through the middle. Maybe, maybe that's how Liverpool go look, because... As I said, buying a player in now, guys, in this short time frame, this is the problem. We've got a really, really short time frame here, guys. Really, really short time frame. Our first game of the season is against Chelsea on the 13th of August, is it? We haven't got long. Our first pre-season game is on Saturday. Next Saturday is our first pre-season game. They're already in Germany doing pre-season training. So we haven't got long, guys. The window is tiny. It like with preseason starting now for a lot of teams, some teams won't want to lose their players when preseason starts because they'll have a plan of right. They're gonna go. Like teams will have plans going into next season already. Their preseason starting. They'll have plans when their players they've got. We're gonna use this player for that situation and. And then a team comes in in pre-season and goes, right, I just want your player now. It's going to be really difficult in this short space of time that Liverpool have got. So maybe they're just going to do it within. Is it Wednesday, Sean? I thought it was Saturday. It's next Wednesday, is it? Why do I think it was Saturday? Big up. Don't know why I thought it was next Saturday. We have got a game on next Saturday, though, ain't we? I swear we have. See, I'm, I'm thick as shit, man. <laughs> Freak of shit. Um, yeah, we have got a game on the Saturday, though, ain't we? 
Let me get the fixtures up. I can't, yeah, yeah, we've got Carl Shaw on Monday. Yeah, we've got Fur from Monday. Oh, Wednesday and Monday. Wednesday, Monday, Sunday. Yeah, there you go. So we've got Carl Shaw on Wednesday. Is it Firth? Another German club on Monday the 24th. Then we've got Leicester on the 30th of July. Bayern Munich on the 2nd of August. And then Damstrat on the 8th of August. So our first pre-season game starts Wednesday, guys. It's mad. I'll be doing a watch along for that, by the way. So make sure you tune in. Um, that's our first game on Wednesday. The time frame is tiny. It's absolutely tiny. Liverpool need a midfielder, no doubt. I just don't know if we can go and get two midfielders in. I just don't know if you can go and get and use two midfield get two midfielders in right now. That is the issue. That's the issue for me. I, it's it's a difficult one. It, 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 it's really really difficult. Let me know what you think in the chat, guys. Let me know, guys. You put in the chat what you think will happen. What do you think will happen? Let me know in the chat, guys. Let me know in the chat. Um, K-Mac, I sent you the link if you want to come on, mate. Um, let me know in the chat what you guys think. I think playing a 4-2-3-1 will help someone like uh, Dominic Sabozolai playing in that 10 role. You've got Gakpo there as well, can maybe fill in in certain roles. But then you take a striker away. Yeah. This has really messed up our transfer window. I ain't going to lie. This Fabinho sale, this late on in pre-season, I think has really messed up what we're going to do. We need to bring two in. There. There's no doubt about that. But I've just got this feeling now that Liverpool might try and do it within. <sighs> They might try and do it within. If they go and get a right back, if Liverpool go and get a right back, I think that tells us everything. If the next play we buy is a right back, I think that tells us everything that they're going to put Trent in that midfield area alongside either a Thiago or McAllister and change it to a 4 2 3 1. So Bosley in the 10, Salah on the right, Diaz on the left, Darwin through the middle. I mean, that's a heck of a front four, by the way, but lots of goals in that. But then I'm worried about a defensive part of the game with Trent and the McAllister or Trent and Thiago. So it's an interesting one. It's an interesting. One. Let's get K Mac on, see what he wants to say. Big up, man. How are you doing? You're muted again. Yeah, they're all live, man. Yeah, I'll be doing all the pre season, so Guys, all pre-season friendlies, if I'm not busy, because it is the summer holidays, if I'm not busy, I'll be doing all the pre-season friendly watch-alongs, guys. So make sure you're uh, you're joining me then. Big up Michael Ramsey as a super chat. No Amrabat because he's gone to AFCON January, plus Lavia is way better than all the names mentioned. Clock uh, won't go away from 433. Big up Michael. I mean, he might have to. He might have to because of this situation. Hey, Mac, how are you, man? I'm all right. I'm all right. Can you hear us okay now? Yeah, yeah, all good, mate. All good. Um, you know what? The more I hear Lavia and the more I look into him, the more, the more I think he's actually a good signer now. Yeah, he's a good player. <laughs> he's a really good I know. player. I know. Oh, it's, I suppose it's the whole project thing, isn't it, that, that kind of scares <laughs> us. But, you know, not, if you present that... If you present that project to, to Klopp the way you just said it then, like, literally, we use the Argo and we bring the Lavia in like as kind of like splitting the game time and him learning, learning how how things work with with um, Thiago. That sounds quite good. <laughs> I mean, be the negotiator, I, mate. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I, I, I'm just trying to think because I don't know if you saw it today. There was links to Pavard again, and they come out and, and yeah. it's from Christian Falk and Dave O'Cop. Remember, Dave O'Cop was the first one who mentioned the Henderson transfer, All right? And and. Um, he was on BNR as well. Big up uh, Born and Born and Reds, I think. Now. Big up yeah, Born and Reds, yeah. great channel. And he was on there talking about it, and um, Harry got the information on that. And he put an article out today, and he's talking about Christian Falk, is who's basically a journalist for Bayern Munich, basically saying that Liverpool are talking to Pavard again and talking to his rep, rep, agents and all that. 
And that got me thinking. That's why I'm saying, that's why I've come up with this. Why are we talking to a right back when we need a defensive midfielder? Is it because we're trying to do it within? Because the talent pool for a defensive midfielder is very small, especially an experienced one, a quality one that Liverpool want. And because of the time frame we got right now, pre-season, so he says starts Wednesday. With the time frame is against us, and we know our owners are not going to go and get, you know, they're not going. To, it's not like Todd Bowley. Oh, you need seven players is a is a billion. You know, what I mean, it's just go and get anyone you want, sort of thing. It's not that scenario at our football club. We know that. So, just got me thinking. Does he put Trent? I was thinking within. And going, right, Trent played well in that double pivot towards the end of the season. I've got Thiago there. McAllister can play in a double pivot. He's done it for Brighton and Argentina. I then get the best out of Sabozlai, putting him in that 10. It's Maybe maybe that's where they're going from, came at because I don't know why we'd be in the market for a right-back otherwise. Well, the thing about it for me is I just want midfielders that are fit <laughs> and I just want midfielders that can play. And there's only one midfielder that we've got left, probably by the start of the season, at the first team, which is a doubt who can play maybe 50% of the games. And that's Thiago. Like, mm. I think Jones has probably put the, the worst of, of his injuries behind him. And they're all kind of freak injuries as well. They weren't, they weren't injuries that that you get normally. Like, like, a, like an eye, he nearly lost his eye, like for a start. And then he got COVID. And then he kept on getting weird injuries. Like... Um, some of them are some of them are down to actually growing, like growing injuries. But if you look at it, like the whole Trent scenario is the one which kind of just keeps on sticking out for me. It's like we're losing midfielders, and we're not signing right backs. So it's okay. So Trent's going to stay as right back. But if we're now going to look at right backs, then there's no reason why Trent can't go into midfield and do that pivot role, which would be perfect. Because like mm. you said, you could put Thiago there, you could put Stefan there, you could put McAllister there, then you got Jones. Obviously, Dominic Sabolsai can play left or right. You know, the flexibility is there. And then if you're just throwing in a Lavia, then I think we're pretty much done. And then if we've got 40 million extra from the Fabinho sale, then maybe we can have a really good go at, at, a, at a centre-back. I think Pavard's like 27, isn't he? 28 million? He's not... Yeah. He's not a huge, huge amount. No, it, it, it's this Liverpool territory, but it's his age, ain't it? It's just not, you know, the only time we've brought a player like, around that, that age is Thiago. We made an from Bayern Munich. Yeah, from Bayern Munich. <laughs> and we made an exception. They always talk about it. Oh, we made an exception because it was Thiago. We don't usually go for that player range, that age range. Um, What's his injury record like as well? I don't, I haven't really done a huge I don't know. Record. Everyone always tells me Pavard's always injury prone and all that sort of stuff. I'm not sure because I, I, I don't know, I'm not sitting here every week watching German football, you know. So, but uh, I, I, I said that if Liverpool want to be ambitious, if Liverpool want to be ambitious, it's a certain geezer at Bayern Munich right now. And I'm just, I just can't get him. Uh, he don't want to be at Bayern Munich no more. He wants to leave. Just go and get Kimmich. If Liverpool want to be ambitious, go and get him. Now, I know Kimmich is off around the same age as Pavard, I think, ain't he? But he's man, I think he's, he might be 27. Yeah, I mean, the man is super experienced, man. World uh, Cups, Champions Leagues, German Leagues, won everything. The man is quality. Uh, he, he, he's versatile I'm, as well. That's the I'm thing. Not, and I know, like very Ben was saying, he's very, he's very similar to Trent. So I remember when Trent was right back and Kimmich was right back. That was always the comparison, wasn't it? Them two players in a very. Yeah. But then you can that can keep Trent at right back. Then, you know, if Trent don't have to come inverted. He can actually stay at right back with Kimmich but, in that role. But does he? Does he want? Does he want to be right back anymore? Though, let's be I honest. Know, I don't know if Kim, if Trent gets the if Trent can get in the freedom and positions he used to at right back, I think he'd be happy. And just. With Kimmich there, look, Liverpool just need to. If they're ambitious, they'll probably go for him. Uh, Can I, I just throw something out there about Pavard yeah. as well, which yeah, might yeah. actually be quite interesting? Um, what if we signed Pavard and Pavard was the third centre back and we moved Canate over to the left because he can play that? I mean, that's just an interesting scenario because. 
because Pavard can play centre back as well and also right back, mm. and he can also play. I think can he play DM as well? I think I think he's quite. I think he's. I think he might have played in midfield before. Yeah, I think, don't quote yeah. me on that. But I know for France, he's he's played centre back and also um, right back, so he's quite versatile, and that's an interesting one because that means is he going to be a centre back for, for you know? <laughs> this, we sign a lot of players. The Kings seem to play a lot of positions at the moment. So it's a little bit like, well, where do they all fit in the jigsaw jigsaw puzzle? Yeah, it, it's it's a, it's a weird one, isn't it? I, I'm not... I mean, if we sign like... a player that Man City are heavily linked with, I, I ain't got an issue with that. Like, that's not that's not a problem. Like, signing Parod is not a problem, by the way. Like, I, I, would, I would be all for it if he's not really injury prone. Like a Thiago at the moment. Like if if he can play like eighty percent of the games, then I haven't really got an issue with signing mm. Pavard because he's a World Cup winner. He's won loads of league titles. He's won loads. Of, he's a winner, pretty much. Oh yeah, I mean he played he played thirty games, thirty nine forty odd. Hang on, just looking at it. Was that last yeah, season? Thirty nine forty two. He played forty three games last season. Okay, so he's not, so he's not a player who's who's not he playing played, games either, which is not what I've heard. But he played forty three games last season. The season before, he played twenty, thirty five. He played thirty six games in all competitions last season. Um, the season before, he played twenty four in the league, seven in the Champions League, two in the World Club Cup, one in the Pokal, one in the Super Cup, one in the Super League. Yeah, so. He actually plays more minutes than you think. Uh, he's played 109 games at centre-back, 146 games at right-back, and he's played seven games as a defensive midfielder. So he can play DM. I, I, I did think he could play DM. Okay, but we're not going to sign him as a DM. But... No, 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 no. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's an, that's an interesting... That's interesting what you say about centre-back. He's played 109 times there. So centre-back and right-back are his two positions. So that's an interesting one. That's, that's definitely an interesting one. I mean, uh, is he? Could could he be? Could he be the Colwell like alternative? Maybe because maybe maybe the Colwell's just not going to happen because Chelsea are just they've already said like no no. Even yeah, if you but, offer like eighty million, it's not going to yeah, happen. If I, if I was Chelsea, looking at the defenders they got at the moment, you ain't letting Colwell go. I, I mean, that's just that'd be mad for him. Um, <sighs> so would you, would you be happy with Lavia and and Pavard? Because I think I would actually. Look, Lavia has got a massive ceiling. There, there is no doubt about it. But if you look at Lavia's stats, Lavia's stats and Casado's stats are not too far apart in what they do. Is, and, I, uh, isn't he a Belgian international now as well, Lavia? I think he had one game. Yeah, I think he's, so he's already game. broke in. So he's yeah, going to be on that next. He's going to be quality. So. The problem is if, uh, if Arsenal, because if Part A is leaving, which looks like the case. Yeah, I think Arsenal really want Lavia as well, which tells you the kind of player is. This ain't a crap player. City got a buyback on him. Arsenal want him. Chelsea have had a look at him, and Liverpool looking at him. So he's obviously and Man City a didn't want to player. let him go. By the way, no. like Pep really yeah. didn't want to let him go. No, he wanted, he got the he buyback. Wanted, yeah, he wanted to play games, didn't he? Just didn't yeah. feel like he was going to play at Man City for a while. So it's interesting because it's such a small window. You know, if if they always knew Fabinho was going to go, this had been like Fabinho would have gone straight away. They were already done their business of getting a defensive midfielder in. I don't think they would have looked at Sabozlai or McAllister before they got a DM in. If they always knew Fabinho was going to go, they would have got that player in first, then got the other two after that. But Fabinho leaving has really, I think, shook them up a little bit. Hendo leaving isn't like the hardest position to to cover. You know, it, like even Lavia could cover Hendo's position. I'm not being horrible with Hendo here. It's just that Lavia will give us more mobility on the pitch and a little bit more quality, uh, more legs, that sort of thing. You know, what, you know, so that's that's just a fact. But Fabinho's position is hard to cover, man. Look, yes, Fabinho's been dead for 15 months. We all agree with that. But we've got to remember the player Fabinho was when he came to the club. And that's what you're trying to replace. That experience, that knowledge, that know-how, and it's a gamble for whatever we get if it ain't someone who's already like that. And I just, 
You remember as well. Remember, no, remember how long it took Fabinho to settle in at Liverpool as well at the same time. Took him a it was while. Like eight months, wasn't it? Yeah, like, Klopp, really. And Klopp he was a right back him. as well. <laughs> yeah. And Klopp played him and it was like, no, nah, he just and we all looked at him and thought, he looks well out of place. He looks well out of place. And then for, and Klopp took him out of the team. And then Klopp took Fabinho out of the team. And Fabinho took a while to get back in the team again and settle down. Know the way Liverpool want to play, the way Klopp wants to play. And as soon as he got used to it, got used to the country, got used to the city, got used to the lifestyle and the style that Liverpool play with, he was on fire. And now we're asking a defensive midfielder to come in and do that in this six-week window. And we've got pre-season on Wednesday. It, it's difficult. I don't... I, it's hard. This is hard for Big Jules to do. You know, Jules Schmack is looking at this and now thinking, right, I've got to get a DM in. We've got a pre-season Wednesday. I've got to replace Fabinho. The talent out there for DM is small for experienced ones because they're all at clubs they don't want to leave. Who's out there? Kone, Lavia, Taram in a way can play there, but he's more of an attacking six and a defensive six. Um, you've got Casado, but Liverpool ain't going to pay 100 million for him. Plus, like I spoke about earlier, I don't know if Brighton want to deal with us <laughs> after we got McAllister so cheaply. So as I there's said, more, there's more stuff like there's more stuff that's been overnight about him going to Chelsea. Now it's really close, so yeah, that's probably gonna probably gonna happen. Oh, and at no. the end of the day, if we went in, Chelsea would probably just go zump us by 20 million. Yeah, exactly. Um, for Farner for Monaco. Yeah, uh, for Farner, like they they they're gonna lose their centre back as well by the looks of it. Yeah, but... I don't know. The the thing about fa- the thing about Fabinho as well, I just want to kind of touch on what you said is you're absolutely spot on. It's like he was never going. No, he might have been going next season, but he was never going. Like he was always going to play again, hmm. and maybe we were just going to kind of reduce his minutes a bit just to give him a bit more time to recover yeah so we never had a plan for him to leave and that's literally hit us like a freight train and now we're like oh crap okay now we've got to speed things up um and the replacement i mean you can't look anywhere else like then really if we're not going to get anyone in then it would have to be tiago or trent with a with a mac as a in the pivot it does make a lot of sense like Marcus Lorente's being written on the chat all the time now. By the way, <laughs> I yeah, said that a while ago. But <laughs> Lorente might be the one. I think everyone's trying to figure out pretty experienced DMs that wouldn't cost the end of the world, and Liverpool can get in quite quickly. By the way, I just got a bit of breaking news. Werder Bremen just put up on their Twitter that Naby Naby Kate got a knock and had to come off in their, pre, <laughs> in their pre-season game. I'm not even joking. Saying a dig at Naby. Verda Bremen literally just put out on Twitter that in their preseason game, uh, they just Naby had to come off because he had a, a slight knock. So there just you go. Sock. And just he said, sock, mate. <laughs> and he said the injuries were behind him. You know, um, yeah, Marcus. Yeah, we're yeah. linked with loads of players now, though. That that um, Andre is is all over the place as well now. Oh, is that that um, Brazilian kid that no one ever yeah. heard of? Just come out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, his, his stats last night, he, he played He played last night. Let me give you his stats, two secs. Uh, I wrote them on the chat. Okay, so he played against International last night, which is a, a pretty good, pretty big team. Yeah. 89 touches, 63 accurate passes, 90% pass accuracy, one key pass, seven out of seven completed long passes, three out of three dribbles, and 10 out of 13 ground duels. And he got foul foul four times as well. So he's all action. He looks like a good player. <laughs> and yeah, that's a big game he played in. Yeah, this one this one came out of nowhere, didn't it? Um it, uh what's the club he plays for again? Fluminense, isn't it? Is it Fluminense? Yeah, Fluminense. Yeah. Uh, and it came out of nowhere. I think it was a Brazilian reporter that t- tweeted it last night, wasn't it? And everyone was talking about it. I think we spoke about it yesterday. And it literally come out of nowhere. And it's like, never heard this guy. And, you know, he, he's one of them Brazilians who looks 20, but he's got like a 40-year-old man's moustache. You know what I mean? Yeah, when I seen his face, I was like, okay, he, he's not 21. <laughs> <laughs> he is, obviously. Well, his passport, his real passport probably isn't. But yeah. No, exactly, exactly. 
Uh, I believe we need experience to play something further than that. I, I do as well, and I think that's why Liverpool go struggle to get one in. They might have to take the gamble. Liverpool just might have to take a massive gamble and go and get someone that isn't experienced. And look, I've, I said this last night, and I think it's true. Liverpool go get Lavia in, and it was going to be Fabinho's sort of like understudy. I think that's the way they were looking at it. Because if you look at it, Liverpool have been trying to get a DM for two seasons now. And try and get too many. The reason is they know they need a replacement for Fabinho eventually. So I think they were looking at getting Lavia in this season. Rotating with um, Fabinho in games. Fabinho has more rest time. Lavia comes in in games. He's his understudy. And then eventually when Fabinho leaves in a season or two, Lavia is then ready to take the mantle and be the number six going forward. I think that was the plan. But because Fabinho's left now, I think Liverpool sort of start looking at thinking, crap, can we actually just go and get Lavia and make him the six straight away with no experienced DM there? Because if Henderson leaves as well, that's another experienced midfielder who could also play there. So if he leaves as well, that is just a very young, inexperienced defensive midfield area. And the... As I said, the time frame we got now buying someone, and look, Europe knows. <laughs> look, everyone knows now that oh, Liverpool, Liverpool need DMs and they need in midfielders, and we're leaving it so late now. We're almost coming to August. They go ask the stupid money. Well, every one of them's going to cost more than forty million now, isn't it? Because they know we've got forty million. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and Lavia, our Southampton guy, budget there fifty million now. I like my, I, we know you I think, want I think we'll probably get him for 45, you know. Yeah. And I think we probably just will have to pay it. I yeah. just do. Like, no, the more I look at it, the more I think he, he's worth it. Like, like, I've looked into him quite a lot now because everyone just keeps on talking about him. But I always thought he was going to Arsenal or Chelsea. I just thought he's the type of player that would go there. Like, um, But the more I think about it, the more it makes a hell of a lot of sense. And, you know, we're probably really good at negotiating with Southampton. We should be. <laughs> oh, yeah, we should, we should have plenty of experience now. <laughs> yeah, definitely, for sure. What other DMs can you think of in Europe, do you reckon, that Liverpool might be looking at? Um, the Amrabat one, people keep on talking about. I think I think he's going to Man United, if I'm mm. honest. It'd be interesting if he goes to Atletico Madrid, because he's been linked with them, because then that frees up Lorente. <laughs> Just saying. He's, been, he's, been, he's been wanting to go to Atletico Madrid, though, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. And look, look, we all know the domino effect in transfers in football. So if he uh, if he goes, yeah, I mean that could make way then for Lorenzo. You would feel you'd feel they're getting Amra if Atletico got Amra about they're going to let one of them go. That could be the case. Italy, look, a lot of clubs in Italy need money. Is there clubs in Italy going there? Sign Polina at Fulham. I, I just think Polina at Fulham. Fulham don't need to sell. This is the difference now in football. Teams like Fulham and Brighton and teams like that, they don't actually need to sell players because they don't need the money. It's not like it used to be when a top team needed a player and they saw them on a smaller side. They'd be able to bully the smaller side and get that player for a decent money because the, that smaller side would need the cash. It's not like that no more. Brighton no. don't need to sell footballers. I mean, just, some just, some of those lower lower teams are signing players like from big teams. Yeah, look at like, Villa buying um, thingy, uh, from by Leverkusen. So th yeah. there's a guy, there's a guy that I will mention that that I rate personally. I rate. I think he's a really good player, and I think he'd be a great DM as well. And I'll probably get a lot of slaughter in the in the chat now. And you might even say something. But I think Philip Billing would be really good. Philip Billing for for Bournemouth. Yeah, he's a decent player. You know the you know the the, the Denmark. Yeah, yeah. He scored against us, didn't he? I think he's massive. Good. Scores goals. <laughs> really good at breaking up play. Kind of captain material as well, if I'm honest. Mm. <laughs> like, I think he'd be great as well. He's twenty twenty six, I think. I think he came yeah. from Chelsea's youth team. I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, but I think I think he'd be a good player. I I don't think he he cost a, a huge amount either. Um. Okay, I've already got a thumbs down from there someone. <laughs> there go, I think there he's go. I think he's attainable, like from Bournemouth. Hmm. And um, I think he scored like ten goals last season as well, you know, something like that. <laughs> yeah, 
Look, it's Gabby. Yeah. Whoever the poor guy gets, Gabby a gamble, let's face it. Um, look, Florentino Luis, I know everyone's looking at. He's got a £103 million buyout clause. So, uh, Liverpool, uh, so we can put that on the back burner. <laughs> so um, just looking at the comments, mate. <laughs> That's shocking. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're getting ripped apart. You're getting ripped apart. Um, yeah. By the way, that was K-Mac, not me. You said that, <laughs> um, uh, Yeah, look. If you go to Fulham and go, oh, we want Polina. And Fulham will go, go you want, okay. Well, let's go across the 70 mil. Liverpool go, go, no, nah, that's all right. Because Fulham don't need to sell. They've got money. They're rich. The Khans own them. They have, they've got cash, man. Oh, we've got one person. So we've got one person that said it's okay. I said Billy last season. Yay. I'll take that. I'll take that. I mean, the Khan family own Fulham. The Khan family tried to buy Wembley Stadium. You know, they have (laughs) got so much money. They don't need to sell Fulham. Uh, They don't need to sell anyone from Fulham. So Polina's going to cost loads, man. This is the problem, guys. I think we've got to just realise how late this is in the transfer window. To get this Fabinho replacement in, yes, Liverpool have the forty million to use. Now all that forty million, we know what FSG are like. If we sell someone, they give them all that money to buy it with, because uh, we are. That's the way they do it. Um, so we got forty million to buy someone with, and you look at it, Lavia's going to probably be that. So you get Lavia in, but uh, Lavia on his own with a young Stefan, it's just too inexperienced right now. I think. Lavia in two to three years' time could be an absolute monster. Don't get me wrong. But Liverpool fans are just going to have to go and acknowledge that it might not be a successful season this season, but in the future, it looks really bright. Maybe we're just going to have to go that. But we know no one's patient these days. Patience is, patience is not a virtue in football. <laughs> but there's no such thing. And that's the issue. Everyone wants to compete today. And I do as well. What K-Bat does. Everyone wants to compete today. But we might have to look at it and think we just can't compete today. And we just going to have to go and acknowledge that it might be a bit more difficult than we first thought. But the future might look a lot brighter after that. You know, Lavia could be an absolute monster. There's no doubt about that. But Callis is going to be a monster for Liverpool. So Bosley is going to be a monster for Liverpool in the next few years. There, you know, that's set. There's no doubt about that. Luis Diaz is only going to get better, hopefully. Gakpo is only going to get better, hopefully. Darwin, hopefully, is only going to get better. Trent is you know, not even in the prime of his career yet. He's already amazing. You know, so we've got players there. It, we just might have to, we just might have to take a tiny bit of a, a, a little tiny bit of a hit on this season, K Mac, in, in 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 a way of our expectations because I felt like if we kept Fabinho, all I did, I've been saying he's trash, but he did get I don't know players around him. I hate using that word because I don't think it should be the case, <laughs> but he is experienced in that area. And it frees us up to get other players in as well. So it's really messed us up, his transfer in when a way. He, when he had Trent, when he had Trent round him, he did look a lot better. I'll, I'll give yeah, him, he's got the legs around flowers him, there, yeah. apart from the Southampton game. <laughs> well, everyone looked crappy that game. But um, what, what you just said then was interesting because I got slaughtered for this a while ago. Is I said that this season is going to be a transition season and we're going to lose a lot of players. And I'd be okay with us coming, like, just, you know, getting Champions League football, maybe a trophy, but not not in the not in the title race. As long as we replace the midfield and we look at replacing some of the defenders, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with waiting a year, like, for the transition, because it's going to take a while for all the players to gel and to, you know, maybe work on a new system that, that, that we're looking at now. I'm okay with that. But that, that then puts us instead for a big challenge the year after and the year after that. And we'll have players that have got the legs to do that challenge. You know, obviously, we're still going to have to get rid of players in the, in the future, like Peugeot van Dijk, Robbo. You know, then we're, then we're going to be looking at Thiago's going to go, Matip's going to go. You know, Salah's going to be like 33, 34 then. So, you know, eventually, that's going to, that's going to move on. But we've got lots of players behind that can pick up that slack. 
But that midfield has been a massive, massive issue. And ripping it out and starting again would be a transition. And also ripping out a few defenders and starting again would be a transition. And I'm willing to wait like to see how this goes, to know that there's going to be a plan. And, you know, it's whether the fans, the fans will uh, wait as well. But I'm OK yeah. with it, like as long as we can see the change. If that makes sense. No, I agree, because I think what's going to annoy a lot of Liverpool fans is because I do think City, I spoke to, I was on uh, Never, uh, Never a Valley the other day and t- talking to Daps and that on there. And I feel like a lot of people I feel like, that, I think. I think I yeah, I think that. a lot of people feel like City are going to have a little bit of a transition next year because City have got a lot of older players, by the way. I think people will forget about that. And they are leaving. And I've all, I'm, people, City fans have even said it, replacing Gundogan Gundogan is very difficult because he's tremendous. If Bernardo Silva leaves Man City, replacing him is very difficult in this market because he's tremendous. You've got Calvin Phillips still at City. I don't think Pep rates. You know, he didn't use them at all. You know, and, you know, Carl Walker might be leaving that football club. They've got, they're in a bit of like, you know, winning a treble. You've won everything. The following season is very hard. I don't care who you are, professionally, manager or whatever, to motivate a team to go again when you've just won a treble coming down from that. So I think a lot of football fans will see maybe the league as a little bit more gettable next season than it was this season just gone. And when you see Arsenal getting Declan Rice in and Havertz in and players like that with the players they've already got, they're going to give it a real go. And, you know, I think Liverpool fan base is a bit like, we've got to give this a go, man. We've got so many special players at our team. We've got Salas, we've got Gakpos, we've got Jotters, Darwins, you know, Luis Diaz is, you know, Sabozlai, McAllister, Trent, Allison, Virgil, Robbo. These are quality footballers, absolute quality footballers that can go and win titles. There's no doubt about it. But if you take the heart of our midfield away, like has happened this season, you know, there's a lot of leadership in that midfield. And I know that's what a lot of people are worried about is that kind of leadership. Last time Liverpool done this, by the way, was in 1991 with Graham Souness. And we all know what happened. <laughs> so, you know, Graham Souness... We know why he did that, though. We yeah. We know why he did that. Yeah. Graham Souness got any big heads in the uh, no, change he, he, <laughs> he got rid of all the veterans. He got rid of all the big heads. He got rid of all the so-called really, you know, the heart of the team. He got rid of them all and bought people like Tool and Picnic. So, you know, it... it, it <laughs> You know, he, he, he tore, he tore, he tore Liverpool apart, and we never. It took, you know, years it took Liverpool to recover from that. Probably till Gerard Ullier. It took probably it till Gerard Ullier. It took Liverpool to recover from what Graham Souness done. You know, and then Graham Souness you know, spoke to a certain newspaper on the day Hillsborough, and never be forgiven about that. No. And um, it, and that's the last time that happened to our midfield. Like everyone going in this one window. Yes. Milner didn't play lots, but he, he's the voice in the changing room. Naby Keita and Ox, yeah, they didn't play much, but they're probably nice guys to have around, leaders in the changing room, maybe. You know, it's things we don't see behind the scenes, guys. That's the problem. What we see on the pitch is what we see on the pitch, but what we don't see behind the scenes, changing rooms, the training, how they are together. You know, all that sort of thing is very important. People sometimes laugh at it and think it don't matter. It really does. Because you hear how many players do you hear when they leave football clubs and feel like, oh, it's, it weren't that they were not playing well at the club. It's just that they didn't feel wanted. They didn't feel it was a good atmosphere and all this sort of stuff. Because that does matter to players. It might not matter to fans because fans are different. We're different. We just care about winning because we're supporters. We want the best for our club. But players act differently. And, you know, losing all that in one summer is going to be hard to replace. It just is. And do I want Henderson to stay at the football club? No, because I've said he's 33 now and he can't do what he used to do and what Jurgen Klopp wants him to do anymore. So why keep him? And I've always said it, that people that want to keep Jordan Henderson, I'm all happy with you. And this is not me going to Hendo, by the way. I love the guy. I've got his book. I've got, I love the guy, right? But if Jordan Henderson played for another football team right now, yeah, and you got told this summer Liverpool go and buy Jordan Henderson, 
How do you reckon the fan base of that? <laughs> oh, I'm just saying. For everyone, who wants keep, for everyone who wants to keep Henderson, I'm all cool with that, yeah? But all I'm saying is the sentimentality in this football club has got to stop, right? Because if Jordan Henderson was playing for Brighton last season and Liverpool going, right, we're interested in Jordan Henderson because he's a homegrown player, we need our quota, and we need a midfielder, so we're going for Jordan Henderson. This chat right now, Liverpool Twitter, every YouTube channel will be like, why are we buying him? He's not good enough for Liverpool Football Club. But then we, everyone wants to keep him at the same time. K-Mac, it makes no sense. Can I can I just say something as well? Um, we're losing a foreign player, by the way. So we, we're going to have two, two spots for foreign players now because Fabinho's gone. So that, that's one to to put into account, we're going to have another slot. Um, can I just rewind back to what, what you were talking about? Yeah, um, rewind, mate, rewind. About Man City. This is what we should have done. What Push. Man City have done now is what we should have done when we went for the quad mm. and we didn't make it. The end of that season, we should have gone, right, now we're going to have a clear out and have the transition. So we should have started a year earlier. And we could have been at a stage now where we hadn't have lost so many players at once because we had already lost a few and signed a few. Yeah. And But we're just at a stage where we've just got to get rid of all of them at once. And the Saudi Arabian thing wouldn't have happened last year, by the way. So it's typical <laughs> that this kicked in at a time when we really didn't want it to happen. And I'm really worried the Saudi Arabia come knocking for a couple of other players, by the way. Well, Saudi Arabia. There's, there's apparently... no reason why they won't try and get Matip. Apparently, St. No Maxim. Apparently, St. Maxim's going to Saudi, and it's just for, just on the Twitter just now. He's like, what? He's like 20, 26, 26. Oh, St. Maxim's on his way to Saudi as well. I mean, it's mental it's quite, the money. It's a oh, oh, and that's interesting, isn't it? Newcastle. Yeah, as well. I just know. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, so, New, <laughs> Newcastle desperately, Nick. Uh, Newcastle can't actually buy players to really sell players. All they, all this money they got, and FFP and all that, they literally ain't got the money like people think they have. So they got to sell players. They want to buy Harvey Barnes from Leicester. They can't buy Harvey Barnes till they sell somebody. They just can't. So they're um, they're they trying found for club Cash Cashavilli, by the way. They found a club they're in trying Saudi for Cashavilli in yeah. Napoli for 80 million, by the way. Oh, well. So I wonder how much. Uh, St. Maximum's going to go for 80 million. <laughs> I don't think St. Maximum's got that long on his contract either. I don't think it's a lot. No, I don't think so. I don't think I so. Don't, I, I, I... You're absolutely spot on, though, with the Henderson thing, though, because, like, if we signed him, everyone would go mental. Like, he should have he should have left at the end of the quad season. Like, mm. you know, it should have been a case of selling. I mean, the pro- there probably would have been some clubs interested as well. Mm. I'm pretty sure David Moyes would probably would have took him because he's always been he's always been after Henderson. He's always liked mm. Henderson. So we could have definitely sold him. Like, if, if I'm going to if I'm going to sit here and read Klopp's mind, then for me, this season, he would have kept Milner. He would have reduced the minutes of Henderson. He wouldn't have sold um Fabinho and he would have bought McAllister and Sabolsai. That would have all happened. Mm. Like I don't know about the centre back position because we just still don't really know if I'm if I'm honest. But I just think that's probably what the midfield would have been. So we would have got Sabolsai and um and McAllister maybe sold Hendo. Like Hendo would have been available and Fabinho wouldn't have been sold and Milner would have got his contract renewed, which meant that we would have had right-back cover still, if that makes sense, and we would have had Mm -hmm. enough midfielders. And I think Thiago might have been available as well. So I think Henderson and Thiago would have been sellable, but Fab not and Milner not. But I think because the board just said you can't can't renew Milner's contract, because even Mm -hmm. even Milner thought he was staying. You know, I just think all of that's kind of throwing everything up in the air. Milner going and Fabinho going. I think those two have kind of it's, caught us it, cold. It's caught us well cold. Yeah, um, so, yeah uh, and I, look, 
it's absolutely so, like he pro- he I'm a fan suits, of banana. It probably man. suits the way Klopp wants to play. There is no way in any world that Everton are going to sell us their best midfielder <laughs> when they know Liverpool need a midfielder. Can you imagine the outrage? You may, I remember the outrage when Nicky Barmby left. You know, it's, <laughs> that'd be worse. That would um, be mental. I'll just go tell you, this is not Liverpool related, but I thought I'd just bring this. So Al Hahali has scheduled a medical for Man City's Riyad Mahrez. But no clubs have submitted a formal offer to Man City. So no formal offer has gone to Man City yet for Mares, but he's gone to Saudi for a, uh, at his new club at El Hali for a, a medical. That, that sounds a bit. That sounds a bit stinky, doesn't it? <laughs> Does that work? They're just so stinky. <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> Why can't we just be stinky as well? Why can't we just all be stinky? <laughs> how, does that, how does that work? Like, there's no formal bid yet at all. No formal bid for Mares at all. They're saying this is from City's end. Someone's wrote 35 million. But he's going, he's got a medical set up for tomorrow. That's just. Man City are losing like five or six players. Like... Yeah, Mares is a bit a big miss, man. Yeah, you know, important he's Mares. Been, he's been really good as a sub. He's, he's a really quality good. sub. He's a quality player. Get him most Premier League teams, let's face it. He's a tremendous footballer. You know, that's what I'm saying. City are going through this little patch. You know, City with the FFP stuff and everyone looking at City right now. City are selling players before they're buying players. That's what City fans have told me. So they're actually looking to sell players before they buy players in. So this is why everyone's like left a bit frustrated with their transfer window at the moment. And I can understand it because. But this Fabinho stuff is just mad, guys. It's absolutely mad. Be up these through in the chat. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Henderson trying for a contract, uh, contact the whole transfer saga. Don't make sense. I, I, I've been thinking that as well about Henderson. Is he just after a contract? Now, if Liverpool gave Henderson a new contract, that would be balmy because he's 33. If you compare Milner and Henderson at the 33, Milner is in far better shape. He, he, his legs were far better. He had more running, more athleticism. Hendo, Hendo's just not that player he was. And giving him a new contract would be mad. He'd be 35 when his contract ends at Liverpool. Why, why, we, why would we give him a new deal? Like, I mean, can you imagine a 35-year-old Henderson Cup? Jesus Christ. I mean, what are we doing here? We've got, we got to stop all this stuff and let players leave. And I think Liverpool actually want Jordan Henderson to leave. It's just the fact that the club that have come in for him have not got have not offered a transfer fee. So Liverpool is stuck. This is the thing with our Henderson situation as well at the moment, which is making buying players a little harder because Henderson's in this position at the football club. Forget about Henderson a minute. The football club's in this position at the moment where Henderson wants to leave. The club are willing to let Henderson leave. Klopp's already said, look, your minutes are going to be dwindled away next season anyway. You're not really a first teamer anymore. You're my captain, but you're going to be a squad player. Henderson apparently weren't happy with that. And he wants to leave the football club. And Liverpool are not standing in his way. But the problem is, no one's bid for him. So he's I, still going to be a Liverpool player. I, I think that's going to end up being untenable. And we're probably just going to let him go on a free. Like, I, I, just, I, just, I just think it makes sense. Like he's gonna cost us what eight million? Like anyway, like eight, eight, ten million in that year, and God knows how many games he might cost us in him playing. So for me, it just makes sense. Just, just let him go. Like, just you know, give him your blessing. Like he's been a legend for us. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I don't want, it, I don't want him leaving in bad terms. No, I just don't want him leaving on bad terms. We can't let that happen. Like, no, I don't want you know, to end. I don't want you to end. Sal, look. Not all um, of us are massive Henderson fans, and I get it as a player. But uh, as, uh, as the captain leader has been for our football club, I'll give him all the respect in the world. It's just that I'm a fan of my football club at the end of the day. I'm not a Jordan Henderson fan. I'm a fan of Liverpool Football Club. And I, I can I, I just want my club to get better. And I can see there's players at my football club that shouldn't be here no more. It don't matter what their name is and what they've done for our football club. It's time for them to move on. And Henderson's one of them. Love the guy all in the world. Hope he has a great career. So 
but for me, he just needs to leave Liverpool Football Club now. I won't have anyone like going at him and smack talk and all that. There's just no need for it. Just he's a player that Liverpool would not buy if he was on the transfer market at another club. And, and he wouldn't fact. be in our squad. No. <laughs> and if, and, and, You're not going to buy him. Why is he in your squad? You know what I mean? And that's what I keep saying. Like, this is not an, an attack on Jordan Henderson as a man, as a human or anything like this. It's not an attack on him. It's a, it's a player that's not good enough for Liverpool Football Club anymore. If jo- I keep saying this. If Jordan Henderson was on the transfer market from another club and Liverpool were interested in him, Every Liverpool fan would say, why are we getting him? He's not good enough for Liverpool. So if we, if we would say that then, there's nothing wrong in saying that he should leave now because he's not good enough for us anymore. It's not it's not a, an attack on him or a hatred on him or anything like that. His time's just come. It happens, guys. He's been at the club 12 years. I don't know what the everyone thing about else it, The thing about it, he cost us £16 million. Like, we have had... £16 million pounds worth of business from him. Like, he's done £16 million worth for us I easily. Remember, I remember when we bought him and everyone said, Just you know, he, he was a waste of money. Why are we buying him? It's a waste. I remember this. I remember Just this. Release him from his contract. Like, we don't need to make money off him. Like, he's paid us back in, in spades. He really has. Yeah, he just let him go. He's paid us back. Over and over again. I can understand the club wanting money for him. Don't get me wrong, because yeah. I can understand it. But but he's, he's not he's not a twenty million pound player. I'm sorry, he just isn't. Like, no. He just isn't. Like no, there's daft money to ask. Just just let him go and get on with his yeah, career. Yeah, I'm fine with it. We haven't got an issue with letting players go anyway. Like, we've just let ninety million pounds worth of players leave, <laughs> and and they were probably worth quite a bit of money. Like we should have, we should have got money for Cater, and we should have got money for, for Ox. But like Hendo's different; he's thirty-three, like, like, and you can't expect any money for Milner. He's like thirty-seven. Like yeah. pair with them, just let them, let them go. Like, let them go. I agree. I agree. I yeah. agree. Uh, guys, on that note, we are gonna go as well. So yeah, big up there, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. Guys, make sure you keep that. You subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because. The way the transfer market is at the moment with Liverpool news, I could go live at any time. There's no real set plan at the moment for uh, videos in the coming week because we're coming into the summer holidays and stuff like that. I'm going to be busy. But if there's any transfer news, I will go live. So make sure you hit your notification bell, subscribe to the channel, and uh, when I go live, you will know about it straight away. Don't forget to get subscribed to KMAX channel as well. KMAX channel, go and subscribe to it. Hit KMAX channel up on YouTube and Go and subscribe to it, guys. Uh, quick question before we go from Sean. That's a question where he thought was going next. I was supposed to be Aston Villa, wasn't it? That was supposed yeah, to be sorted. Dead and done but, there, isn't it? I'm not sure, man. But yeah, big up, guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. See you again soon. Much love. Enjoy the rest.